are these people? I want to talk about this story because this kind of came on my radar within the last 48 hours. And I think it's very interesting. And this is probably a story that we will probably follow. But um, so apparently this happened back in May where Biden declared Kenya to be an unofficial ally of NATO. So what does that mean, you may ask? Um, well, Africa Stream is going to tell you exactly what that means and the implications of what is happening in Kenya right now that kind of overshadow um, this. So, mm. so let's get into it. You Since gaining it independence in 1963, Kenya has been like a pretty African girl enjoying the attention of two suitors. US-led Western group of nations wooing her with wealth and might, and the Russia-China bloc with its promises of a new multipolar world. Previous Kenyan governments forged economic and cultural ties with Washington and London, but at the same time built cordial relations with Russia and China. President William Ruto's decision to have Kenya side with the US as a non-NATO ally marks a significant shift away from the country's previous non-alignment policy. The move raises questions on what Kenya stands to gain and potentially lose by aligning with the US and its foreign policy enforcer, NATO. First, here's what Kenya will lose. The BRICS trade alliance in major developing economies looks set to become even more dominant with numerous countries desperate to be let in. But Kenya will miss out by opting for the empire of sanctions and tariffs. In the long term, BRICS is a place to be if you're looking for cheap oil and gas to run your country. BRICS now accounts for 32% of the world's natural gas output and 43% of crude oil. With future expansion, BRICS hopes to transform global energy markets by introducing a non-dollar currency for trade settlements. And don't forget all the juicy trade and infrastructure deals members will benefit from. In future, Nairobi will now likely have to get the nod from Washington before we can proceed with any foreign policy decisions. Or in other words, Kenya has surrendered its sovereignty to the US. And here's what Kenya will gain by going to bed with the U.S. Are you fucking kidding me? Nairobi will get some of the $200 million funds pledged by Washington for the deployment of a thousand Kenyan police officers to Haiti to restore order to the troubled island nation. Kenyans and Haitians largely don't support this mission, and it's hard to see how Kenya will pacify Haiti when it's got its own bandit problems at home. Kenya will get new toys to fight terrorists in the region but that might not translate into success on the ground. According to one report, terrorism increased by a jaw-dropping 100,000% in Africa during the US war on terror. Our Sahel brothers know a thing or two about this, and that's why they have ordered Washington to pack up and leave the region. Maybe it's their example Ruta should follow. Nairobi will get money from trust funds to speed up investments in clean energy. But how will the transition work if you hedge your bets with a country that slaps 100% tariffs on China's electric vehicles simply because it can't compete? Kenyan firms can bid on contracts to repair and maintain US equipment used in the continent. They can also provide storage and logistical services for US military operations for a fee. But does Kenya really want to dance on the graves of Libyans killed by NATO in 2011, not counting the other victims of NATO's imperialist wars around the world? Given what's on the table, whose flowers would you take? As for Kenya, our choice has been made. What does that sound like to you? It or sounds what does like this remind you of? Fucking every colonial problem ever. Um, right. You know, plenty of South American countries, plenty of African countries. So, I mean, right now, Places like Burkina Faso and stuff like that have been pushing back, no? You know? Yeah. Like, trying to get rid of those colonizing chains, you know? So, right. and as long as those chains don't, you know, find some U.S. military aid to come send send your way. It wasn't Kenya also sending places to Haiti? Oh, we're going to get into that. Okay, I figured. We're going to get into that. Uh, so, but just to give you an idea, so basically Kenya is Since now, gaining independence. Kenya is now essentially the West 
bitch, essentially. Mm. Uh, and in the midst of all of that, uh, if you go, go into the slide now, um, yep. there are massive protests happening in Kenya right now. Mm. Uh, you probably might have seen some of this on Twitter yesterday. Um, so Kenya's president, Ruto, calls for protests, calls protests tre treasonous after police fire live rounds at demonstrators. Uh, this article is from CNN. Um, not going to read who read it, but, um, but according to CNN, Kenyan President William Ruto denounced protests on Tuesday that saw a parliament stormed and at least five people shot dead as treasonous but did not address the swelling outrage against a controversial finance bill that sparked the widespread demonstration, demonstrations. Kenya is in the grip of nationwide protests against the proposed tax hikes, culminating in Tuesday's total shutdown of the country, which quickly turned violent as police used tear gas and life rounds on protesters. The controversial finance bill has unleashed widespread protest movement, movement vowing for seven days of raids. So in other words, this is their version of January 6th, basically, uh, if you want to look at it that way. Um, last week, the government scrapped some tax increases, including a proposed 16% added value tax on bread, along with taxes on motor vehicles, vegetable oil, and mobile money transfers. But the concessions have not been enough to quell protests amid the rising cost of living. Um, so... We'll play this clip uh, from CNN. Shout out to Case Study QB for pulling it. It will give a little bit more uh, details uh, surrounding the protests uh, in Nairobi. So you can go ahead and you can play the whole thing. Yep. Working on it. All right, there is breaking news. There's smoke billowing out of the parliament building in Kenya's capital and shots fired at protesters in the streets. This all started with a demonstration by people angry at the growing cost of living. They breached at least part of the parliament building. CNN's Larry Madowo is in the middle of it all. Larry, give us the latest. John, we're outside Kenya City Hall. This is the office of the governor of Nairobi. This is just a few hundred meters away from Kenya's National Assembly, and it's on fire. This is one of the few buildings around here that we've seen small smoke billowing out of. The parliament building was one of them, and this is the other one. Before I get inside, I just want to show you over here. Police have been pushing back the protesters further and further away from Kenya's parliament. After they breached the floor of the house, they got inside, sat on the speaker's chair, and pulled out the mace from that building. Now they're getting pushed back away. The anger here is over the high cost of living. These protests are part of what is called seven days of rage against overtaxation in the country. The government of President William Ruto has recommended new tax proposals in what is known as the finance bill. And these protesters, many of them young people, organizing on TikTok, this Gen Z revolution, so they're calling it has been very vocal in trying to force the government to do something and to reduce the cost of living. This is the scene inside where the government of Nairobi, the city of Nairobi, the capital sits, and this is the scene in here. You see a writing on the wall here? I was here, reject finance bail. That's been the message of these people for the past few weeks. But this momentum has built over the past few days as the government of President Ruto essentially said that they would be listening to the concerns of these young people and trying to engage them, but they don't feel that the government has been paying enough attention to them. And it's all come to a head in these protests. And today we saw an extraordinary scene with Auma Obama, the half-sister of uh, former President Barack Obama, joining these young people here in the protests. And she was tear-gassed while live on CNN. And she said, all the young people are saying is listen to us, John, and the government does not seem to be paying attention. And Larry, I know you also saw people hurt Maybe, maybe more than hurt on the streets. Describe some of what you saw. We did see at least two bodies lying outside Kenya's parliament. In one most heartbreaking scene, it was a young man who had been shot by live rounds right in front of our eyes. His brains shattered on the floor outside Kenya's parliament. We saw at least one of the young men who had also been killed. After we saw police use live rounds outside Kenya's parliament to try and beat back protesters who made their way to the wall and eventually inside Kenya's parliament, CNN has reached out to the police to understand exactly what happened here and to get an updated number of casualties. We have not heard back from the Kenya police yet, but this is the scene leading to Kenya's parliament. You still see a huge security presence just around this National Assembly area. I would say we have probably 300, 400 police officers, water cannon trucks. We've had police choppers flying overhead. A huge, heavily militarized response to what has been largely peaceful protests against the high cost of living in Kenya. Extraordinary images of Nairobi City Hall on fire with you walking right in and the parliament sees there for a moment as well. Larry, please stay safe. Keep us posted as this continues to develop throughout the morning. So basically the protests there in regards to
you know, just people are pissed off that they're being taxed in, t in terms of higher cost of living. So now they're, <laughs> you know, that so they're showing up, showing up and showing out. So, um, so yeah, let's continue with the actual article. Um, a CNN team saw two bodies lying motionless on the ground in Nairobi as the country's parliament was breached. Kenyan police were also seen beating and later arresting some paramedics who are helping injured protesters. During a nationwide address after parliament was set alight, ah. Ruto said the events on Tuesday were a grave threat to national security and that the conversation around the bill had been hijacked by dangerous people. It is not in order or even conceivable that criminals pretending to be peaceful protesters can reign terror against people, their elected representatives, and the institutions established under our constitution and expect to go scot-free. The president said, adding that democratic expression and crime must be isolated from one another. So, sounds like you can protest, but not this way. Yeah. Is what they're saying. <laughs> he's saying. Mm -hmm. This a, sounds like Biden in that regard. Uh, okay. The use of live bullets must now stop, the statement said. Despite the assurance by the government that the right to assembly would be protected and facilitated, today's violence protests have spiraled into violence. Human rights observers and medical officers have reported several instances of human rights violation. The demonstrations sparked by the Finance Bill 2024 have seen citizens rally under the banner of Seven Days of Rage, as the nation faces war days of upheaval. The dramatic scenes that unfolded in the nation's capital saw government buildings set on fire and a ceremonial mace stolen from parliament in the melee. Kenyan lawmakers were evacuated from parliament as police were up against protesters, CNN affiliate NTV Kenya reported. The protests come as Kenya's standing gains global prominence as U.S. President Joe Biden designated the country a major non-NATO ally on Monday, marking the first time a sub-Saharan African nation has received this status. In May, Biden announced his decision to elevate Kenya to this destination while hosting President Ruto at the White House for a grand state visit, celebrating 60 years of diplomatic relations between the two nations. Tuesday also saw hundreds of Kenyan police officers arrive in Haiti's capital to lead a multinational mission, mission, to support Haiti's national police in battling deadly gangs that seize control of much of Port-au-Prince. So you can play this. This is from Breakthrough News, where we can see some of these, the first officers arriving uh, in Haiti. Okay. Um, yeah, hold on. We want this. So as this is going on, we talked about what's happening in Haiti right now. So for those of you, for, for the people who, I think that was the segment you produced. So like, so those, if you remember, can you share with the fam, like what's the issue with Haiti right now in terms of, because this relates to it. Um, like there was a cannibal story that you reported on in Haiti that. Yep. Is actually not cannibalism at all, but sounds like it's just more people being galvanized and being more organized in order to push against the puppet president that's currently in Haiti right now, right? Yep. Um, okay, so... Yeah, that's it. So you can zoom out. Thanks. Um, so, so basically, this is what's going on. So you can zoom out for a second. Yeah. Oh, yeah. By the way, what happened to your? Is your camera okay? Yeah. Um, I was just making. I a, can't see you though. Uh, how about how about this? That's um, good. Um. Um. So yeah. So so basically, it's a perfect storm. Of things happening in Kenya right now. So Kenya is now unofficially part of NATO. Um, protests are happening in light of life sucking 
uh, for the working class. And Kenya is essentially con it, it being the West bitch in terms of sending their police over to Haiti, as they say, as a mission, but really it's to basically become the West arm uh, in terms of actually having people that look like them being able to facilitate the West's doing uh, in Haiti, which it's kind of surprising to me that they're going to choose. I guess you can make the argument that they're willing participants in mm. what they want to do in Haiti, but I'm kind of, almost kind of shocked in a way that the West will go as far as asking Kenyans in order to do that, but who knows? Right. But, yeah. um, so, so shout out to Indy for pulling this. Um, this might relate, and this it's and we're going into speculation territory, but we do think so. In terms of you know the West in dealing with Kenya, that is probably like a more well. Obviously, what they're doing is more nefarious, but there probably is a lot more to this decision than what it's necessarily being reported. So, uh, this is an article from Substack. Um, if you zoom in, please. Uh, mm -hmm. That's written by Clandestine, um, and they report Deep State Bio Network moves to Africa. So this person wrote, uh, Ukraine Bio Object, new report from Russian MIL, alleging that the Pentagon relocated the bioweapon operation to Africa due to Russia's liberation of the labs in Ukraine. Mm. Kirov alleges that Biden owned MetaBiota and other intermediary NGOs are running cover for the U.S. State Department and DOD, posing as a humanitarian operation to conceal their true objective of pathogen production for Big Pharma. Kirov also points out that the Biden owned MetaBiota had been forced to stop operating in many countries in Africa due to awareness of their nefarious biological activity and agenda. Also mm. keep in mind, the founder of Biden-owned Metabiota is... Jose Maxwell. Yes, I do. Of course. And Clinton affiliate biologist Nathan Wolf. Yeah. Later in the brief link, Kirloff also alleges the U.S. are planning to spread disease by mi migratory birds. This comes after Kirloff previously alleged that the U.S. plan to manufacture another pandemic for the 2024 election like they did in 2020, bird flu comes to mind. Safe so, and effective, everyone. Safe and effective. This is, this is yeah. very, very safe and effective. Um, um, so this is the consortium that Indy pulled out. And, just, and we're just going to look at it real quick. But you can see, if you scroll down, that there are a few names yeah. that are representative of Kenya. Mm. as well as other countries in Africa as well. So, again, this is speculation. Uh, so I don't want to say this as fact. But this kind of makes sense in terms of what we see, you know, happening with the U.S. granting Kenya unofficial NATO status. The fact that, and we've talked about this in the past, of how many military bases are in Africa alone. Like, there, we, we don't even know how many they are uh, because some of them are just so secret that we don't even know, but, you know, how many there are. But this kind of leads into the perfect storm of, you know, and I said this in the yesterday, this just seems like a way for the West to build a wedge between... Africa and BRICS. Mm. Um, because given that Kenya would have been a perfect candidate for BRICS, uh, this just seems like a perfect way for the U.S. to infiltrate um, Africa. And given that Ruto is, a, as I said, a willing participant in wanting to work alongside the West for reasons that I don't really get um but it, it i kind of feel this is 
in a way that Israel is kind of like a proxy to Iran, I feel mm -hmm. like Kenya, if everything is kind of aligning in the way that I think it's going to, or could be, could be um, the West proxy partially uh, in Africa in terms of them kind of watching over China and Russia. So that's kind of my take on it. Um, what do you think? I mean, it just seems like more NATO fuckery going on, you know? So we'll see. Um, it would be nice if if Africa didn't capitulate to U.S. demands every every time, you know. Yeah. So. Oh. Yeah. Like I said, I think this is a story that we're going to be watching and we'll give updates. But I found it kind of interesting, you know, especially in light of the protests that are happening in this country right now. That I think. It just kind of shows, but I think even with that, it just kind of shows that people are willing to protest on the ready in the global mm -hmm. South compared to <laughs> like how we have to almost beg people to kind of protest here. So, um, but yeah, like I said, we'll probably do an update once we get more information, but um, I did want to share that, um, you know, just to kind of give a little more perspective of what's happening in the world, but also just getting an idea of how the West is trying to increase their power and their influence, uh, but I think also mostly to kind of give Russia and China a hard time in terms of, like, being friendly with the countries that would be very favorable to BRICS, and basically swooping in and saying sweet nothings and trying to offer them things that, you know, ultimately is going to benefit the West in the end, but as I said, got to be a willing participant. Um, so if you enjoy that story and other stories like these, many of them will be demonetized, uh, you can scan the QR code to, um, Kofi, or you can go to the link, uh, that you see at the bottom of your screen, or if you're in chat and you type in, uh, explanation point donate, you can get that link if you want to, uh, donate to us on Kofi. If you also go to our description, you can see where else you can also donate to the network as well. Uh, we are heavily uh, suppressed uh, on YouTube, so we would really appreciate it if you like, share, and subscribe to the network. Any little bit helps towards getting our network and your na our names out there. Um, that does help with the algorithm, so they say. So please like, share, and subscribe our work and help us get, we have 3K, but let's push it to five um, so we can grow our channel and we're able to do more fun things. So, yeah. So, yeah. Um, you said this, right? Yes, I did. This. Cool. I um, said all of that. Let's check yep. chat. Doing that. Um, uh, sorry, yeah. One second. Next story. Um, I've been making a scene in the meantime. Uh, where is it at? I just saw it. It is. No. No. I just had to scroll through my list of things. There it is. Got it. Um. Look, I made I made this. Uh, you can see, right? There you go. Doesn't that look nice? That looks nice. Sure. For vertical video, because normally it's like stuck in the middle in a weird size. Um, but right. anyway, all right. To chats we go. Um. So, I was told Indy was gonna co-host. Says Nick Rivera. He he will be here soon. Um, but I fixed my PC. In time, yeah, that's why it, that's why in the it would have been in the and me because Reef's computer was not working, but he got it to work within an hour before we went live, so he yeah. was able to do it. But that helps in the in terms of putting his kids to bed before uh we feature our last story, which he really wanted to be here for anyway. So, um, um so you'll see him later. W Smith is still not loading on Rockfin, so. 
Uh, we did we did talk to Rockfin today. They're they're supposedly working on it. So and he's saying Rumble's not live. Uh, it should be. Um, unless you, I mean, you set this stream up, right? So I didn't check. I just assumed. So let's look at restream. Um. And fix that, I guess. Because I don't know if you change the keys and all that stuff. He said Rock for this live on his channel. It should be live on my channel, because I fixed it before. On my, not mine, but INN. It is live on INN. It should be. Um, and I don't think I sent it live to Indy's channel. Um... It says it's going to rumble unless you didn't change the QR code. Not the QR code, but the streamer config. Um, someone says they're watching on rumble. So maybe it did indie, indie song. Um, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't make the rules. Yeah, it says we're live. I think you just gotta refresh. Um, so, anyway, um, all right, you ready for our next story? I'm sort of. Eat. Okay. Um, you so, want me to read it stuff? I can read stuff. No, I'm read. good. Uh, this is the last segment anyway for me, so I'm good. Um, I, it's, it's just that.